Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Simon. Welcome to Tantrums and Tabletops. And in this video, we're going on a bit of a tangent. Catch you after this. When we started Tantrums and Tabletops as a channel, the idea was to spend time together as friends, to hang out, play games, and just really enjoy the hobby a little bit more. So tonight, what we're going to do is have a little bit of a retrospective about the last two years. All the things we've done over the, the two years, so the games we've played, some of the paint changes we've partaken in, and just generally the hobbies we've actually maybe grown into due, due to the channel, and how we've grown as YouTubers. So hopefully tonight, we'll have a little discussion, me and Ben, and it'll fill you in. As well as looking backwards, we're also going to be looking forwards in these videos. The intention is that once a month or so, we'll get together, either two of us, three of us, or four of us, talk about what we've achieved in the hobby. If we've painted anything, we can show each other those. Any games we found, anything we're just looking forward to, things coming up, that kind of thing. Right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna have a little bit of a retrospective of us as people and our YouTube channel, why we started the YouTube channel and where we've got to now and what we wanna do going forward. Mm. So we started off as a group of friends. We also, started as friends. <laughs> we started as friends. <laughs> At the end of this podcast, it might end. No, 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 fine. Me and Ben are fine. It's the other two. <laughs> so, yeah, we started the YouTube channel. It's more as a, at the end of COVID, we'll be totally honest. We started, we thought, how do we get together? How do we sort of interact as friends again? Yeah. Interact as people again. I think we, we, uh, we royally missed the boat because everyone who's in the hobby YouTube space jumped on it at the start of COVID. Yeah. And... We procrastinated, dragged our heels and got into this at the very end of COVID. When we were far too old and we, no one would really care about us. Yeah. But we have a good time. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, the, the, um, the initial concept was just getting together, hobbying. Playing some Warhammer off, yeah. initially, wasn't it? Yeah, just to get, to get some Warhammer going. Yeah. We play. Um, you know, Simon and I are both fans of 40k, Necromunda. Um, Tom also plays 40k. Um, but that was the initial plan, and then it sort of evolved into, let's play Hero Quest. Sorry, that was the first collection of videos that we had. Yep. Um, and why, why we actually started doing a YouTube channel was just a case of pure, just banter between us, wasn't it? Yeah. Just as, just as mates. Oh, everybody else is doing YouTube, let's do it. And we haven't done it to, to rule the world or, or make a load of money. We've just done it because we thought, you know, if people were in the same boat as us, they sat at home, want to get into the hobby, but they haven't really got a chance to go mm. out, you know, like me and, me and Ben and Tom, we've all got kids, when do you have time to go out and actually do this stuff? Yeah. And this, there's, a, there's a lot to be said about the fact that the hobby is very insular. Yeah. It can be, um, you know, you sit at home, you paint your models by yourself, especially when COVID was happening, you couldn't yeah. go out and play with people. Um, so when we had the chance to get back together again as a group of friends, it was, you know, it's nice to be able to connect on that level and we hope that we don't take ourselves seriously. No. We like to rib each other quite unmercilessly at times. <laughs> but perhaps someone would see that and think, oh, okay, I can relate to those idiots. Yeah. And this is what I enjoy. Let's watch what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically, because I, I say we don't, like, like Ben just said, we don't take ourselves seriously. So we're not, we don't proclaim to be the best players of any game in the world. If you've watched any of our videos, that's no. not the case at all. We don't claim to be the best painters. Don't be wrong. Ben puts a lot of effort into what he does. He looks a lot of research in. That's why some of his videos are on, on the channel because he puts a lot of time and effort in because he wants to become a better painter and progress forward. So if those hints and videos can help you, that's kind of why you start yeah. doing your videos, isn't yeah. you? So and again, with the game inside of it, we all do the games. It's just a case of one of those, a lot of people play games and they take it far too seriously. And if you've seen some of our videos, there's been some tantrums. Two, three, dead. One, two, three, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. What is the point in this game? I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> but it's the idea of you don't have to master these games to have fun. We just have fun playing the games. You yeah. don't have to put every rule and like to strict guidelines of how we play games. So yeah, it was just a case of anybody can do this. We're just idiots. We play games. We do modeling. We, we table uh, scale modeling, not yeah. topless modeling. Although well, that's on the cards. So obviously we branched out after Hero Quest. We've yep. gone into uh, other games like Mansions of Madness. We've played Betrayal at House of the Hill. Mm -hmm. um, Tom even spent some time creating his own game based on Lord of the Rings, yep. which we've played on the channel. Um, and it's all been fun. It's all just a learning experience. Yep. It's been 
good just to get together as friends. We say that I've, you know, I think we've both said that a lot already. Yeah. And this video is not very long, <laughs> but. The main point is having busy lives and responsibilities means you don't always get time to enjoy your hobbies. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's nice that we can get together, we can have a laugh, yeah. and if we make a video that our parents watch, we've done well. <laughs> so going forward, I suppose this sort of podcast we've got together, or we're chatting today, is a bit of interaction as well, so anybody who's watching, because obviously we are playing some games. It would be nice to hear from people out there to say, what games do you like to see us play? Yeah. Because if we've got them, we've got a lot of games between us, we could play them. Or if not, suggest them to us, we might go out and buy them and we're, we're playing them on the channel. Yeah. Anything for a bit of a laugh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got, um, we've got intentions to play Gaslands. We want to learn how to play that. We've got, you know, the, the system looks really cool. Yeah. Um, going back to the more games workshop centric side of things we've really interested in blood bowl yeah uh, again 40k kill team yeah necromunda we've got some retro stuff we've still got space crusade to play anybody yep. who's into the retro stuff so another game to play on the on the, on the cards mm. we've got um blackstone fortress as well yeah we have cursed city yeah so the warhammer side anybody who's, who's into the warhammer hobby we covered that side, so there's X-Wing on the cards. Mm. Which I'm, I'm currently writing a campaign for that. I've actually got the campaign pretty much finished. It's a case of sitting down and teaching the rest of the boys how to play it, because yeah. no one else has to play it apart from me and Tom. Um, we've also got, Tom's got in the pipeline, I believe, Resident Evil. Yeah, he's got Resident Evil board game, uh, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, uh, I've got The Last of Us coming when it finally ships. Yep. So there's a lot of things that we're looking forward to playing. Um, throw on top of that more painting challenges, more reviews. You know, we've got a lot of ideas for the future. Yeah. So on top of the different games that we want to play and the ongoing battle of the minds that is our painting competitions, mm. um, when the channel started, we were four idiots in a shed. Um, we're now four idiots in an industrial unit. So we have more space, which also gives us the option to take on or attempt bigger projects. And I know something you and I are keen to do is build some actual gaming tables. Yeah. Um, so there was one idea you had which was kind of orc themed. Yeah, I want. I've I got the old Kill Team Orc set uh, a few years ago. Well, I think it's about two years now. Mm. It? It's been out. So it's all the orc terrain. I bought the actual orc terrain to go with it. It'd be nice to just have literally a board just for an orc base, as it were. And then you can have we have campaigns where the orcs are defending their base. And we have marines coming in to attack mm. them. So things like that. So that would be quite cool. Just to sort of now we've got the unit, we can actually build that and have a, a bit of an ongoing blog and what we're doing and how we're building it. Yeah, and we said about for Blood Bowl, we want to play that. Yeah. We have the ability to 3D print, um, but we've also thought about building an actual stadium yeah. just to make the videos a bit more immersive as well. So you see battle reports and just games, and we don't just want a top down camera, we want to actually immerse you as a viewer in what we're doing yep. so that's the plan going forwards is to make make miniature worlds for the games we're playing yeah yeah it's, like ben said to make it a bit more immersive to make to, to keep you interested in what how we're interested because i think at the moment we're very much we're very invested in the games and we need to we need to evolve as a channel like we have what like we said we started about two years ago yeah we've evolved to the point now where we've decided it'd be nice to have somewhere a bigger gaming space so we can actually go to somewhere rather than a shed mm -hmm. So we've got actually space where we can build stuff and then with regards to that, once you have a bigger area to, to play in, you can film better and you can light better and you know, again, we do it for ourselves, we want to make this nice, so it's good for us because we enjoy doing it and it's good for hopefully you as well when you're watching it to say, actually this is really cool, we got these guys are just doing it on a shoestring budget, let's be honest, Yeah. but we're making it viewable for you guys if you sat at home maybe doing painting maybe doing whatever just to sit on the background and laugh at four idiots <laughs> so to move into more of what this series should be tangents and tabletops is what the uh, working title is for this at the moment so undoubtedly we'll start off on a topic we'll see something shiny we'll end up somewhere else but we'll circle back in the end yeah but looking ahead or looking in the short term is there anything hobby wise that you're looking forward to anything that you're planning on working on anytime soon well the thing I'm planning on working for this year or working on sorry will be my Blackstone Fortress mm. because we've sort of well hopefully by the time this video comes out 
We would have finished playing Hero Quest. The last series of Hero Quest should be coming on the channel. Um, so we're going to put that to bed for a little bit. Um, and then we're also going to delve into other board games. Yeah. So one of them I really am looking forward to, because I'm I'm a bit of a 40k fan, don't get me wrong, I do like the other things. I haven't branched out enough. That's one thing I need to, mm. this channel is actually helping me do, is branch into other realms as it were. But one of the 40k games I did buy was Blackstone Fortress. And so painting those models up so we can play as a group will be quite cool because at the moment anybody who watches Hero Quest, I'm sort of the dungeon master, the rest of the guys are playing, whereas we can play Black Stone Fortress as a team. Yeah. And we can play against the baddies basically. So yeah. we can be the a group of heroes for a change rather than one of us being picked on. <laughs> You'll still be the villain in my book. <laughs> no, cool. So are you planning on um filming that painting process yeah yeah so a series of videos on that and doing a series of videos of filming the painting process probably get you involved in some of those and like hints and tips and stuff just so your point of view as it were nice and then um yeah just making get, getting a vlog of that actually building it up and then a little bit of a vlog of how we actually play the game mm. and then yeah delve into it like we did here request and then just bash through the campaigns and hopefully people enjoy the ride as it were nice sounds good what about yourself, Ben? Anything else you're, uh, you're uh, planning on doing in the future? <laughs> Where do we begin? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so my hobby time at the moment is very, very full. Um, so as Simon mentioned, we have a bit of a collaboration going with Heroes, which is our local uh, comic and game store on the Isle of Wight. Um, they are the distributors for Corkhead Comics, which is an island-based comic company. I'm currently involved in producing a line of action figures for them. So that's taking up a lot of my time. Yeah. But I'm hoping to have that, or the first wave of those put to bed within the next couple of weeks. Nice. Um, and then I really want to focus on improving my painting. Yes, yeah. So... Um, it's about time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he knows I only kid. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've not painted anything at sort of a miniature scale for yep. a few months so I just need to get my hands and my eyes back on that yeah um I really want to learn non-metallic metal oh gosh yeah, um, yeah so obviously it's something that people might find unnecessary but I look at it I just think it looks stunning when it's done yeah well. yeah yeah so um another thing you're going to probably do is a little vlog for yourself yeah yeah. Channel, yeah yeah so I've uh, Tom has very kindly 3d printed me a bunch of miniature knights so I can practice that yep. so just like the different armor panels different techniques nice um after that, uh, I'm working on an Age of Sigmar army. Mm -hmm. So I've got Soulblight Grave Lords on the go. Um, whether they're going to be relevant when AOS 4 comes out, who knows? Um, I've also got more 40k than I can shake a stick at to paint. So yeah, it's finding the hours in the day. But yeah. the plan is um, to do. So the plan is to do a lot of sort of again, just vlogging basically to keep myself accountable, keep track of my progress and just share that to, yeah. the, to the wider world. Yeah, exactly. And this is no disrespect to Ben at all because Ben is on that journey himself to improve himself. Ben is a good painter, don't get me wrong. He's a great painter. I'm not, I'm not going to butter him up while he's sat right next to me because he's, gonna, he's touching me under the table as we speak. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, it's just to prove on the channel, like I say, it's not a case of look at us, look how great we are. It's Ben's journey, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. It's just to show, look, this is how I'm developing myself. You're kind of seeing Ben's journey from, Ben's not a novice by any means, but he's still improving. So it just sort of shows anybody who is painting out there, there's loads of techniques you can learn and just keep making yourself better and better, isn't it? Yeah, it's very kind of you to say. Yeah. Um, and one thing that we spoke about a long time ago, and here we are on a tangent, welcome to the show, <laughs> is um, you see a lot of tutorials and painting videos on YouTube where here's the basic techniques you need to learn and someone's instantly pulling out an airbrush yeah. and I use an airbrush but if you see that in a tutorial that's supposed to be teaching you the basics that's going to turn you off yeah so you know it would be nice if some of the videos that we can produce are literally from a beginner's perspective and sort of actually being helpful and useful yeah and, and sorry just to interrupt that as well tangent. as a tangent that's one of the things we're going to hopefully do with Ethan. As yes. you'll see, Ethan's part of the channel. He's never painted a miniature in his life. So hopefully a, a little video going forward will be me and Ben probably sat down with him and sort of teaching some of the techniques me and Ben have picked mm. up over the years to sort of bring Ethan up because Ethan wants to learn that. So again, he's eaten a lot of paint, but he's not put a lot of it on models. <laughs> no. So there we go. No. 
So with all that rambling out of the way, yep. uh, let's jump into what the main topic for today's video was intended to be. Yeah. Uh, so just over a week ago, Tom and I went to London. We left the cosy confines of the Isle of Wight. We travelled to the Big Smoke. Did you get your shots? We nearly did. No. Oh. Uh, and we went to Salute. So you were going to come with us. I was, but unfortunately life got in the way, so I couldn't go. So it's actually quite a good time to sit down here and find out what actually happened because I haven't had a chance to know exactly what happened at Salute. Yeah. So. <laughs> so for some background on what Salute is, um, Salute is the biggest one day tabletop wargaming convention yep. in Europe. It's run by the South London Warlords. They're a, like a, a wargaming club. Mm -hmm. um, it's, like, it's a massive trade show basically yeah. but there's demonstrations of games there's participation games and we're, and we're talking about every sort of game out there so yeah. not just 40k we're talking about everything no, it, was, it was there was very little games workshop there there was oh, some yes. yeah. um, which we can talk about in a minute but yeah. it's there was a lot of historicals Napoleonics World War 2 yeah. different scales so there was 15 mil um, like big <laughs> pirate ship galleon games which was awesome yeah. obviously it was a long journey up we left the island ferries Trains. I, I heard you shared a room together too. The less said about that, the better. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Uh, one of us didn't sleep very well. <laughs> you can. Uh, we'll leave that to your imagination as to why. The grumpy one. <clears throat> um, one of us was definitely more of a morning person than the other. <laughs> Wake up. But yeah, so we got to we got to the event. It was at the XL in London. Um, we wanted to get there early because something they do is they provoke, they give a goodie bag oh, nice. to the first, it sounds a massive number when you see how many people are in there, the first 6,000 people through the door get given a, yeah. a goodie bag that's got a complimentary miniature in it, there's like a program and a guide to the event. Nice. Um, there were other goodies scattered throughout them, so a thousand of them had um, like a magnetic miniature box in there, some oh. had dice trays. There was, I believe, a golden ticket where like 10 people could win like an entire scenery bundle oh, from a so. distributor, which was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we got there. The queue was pretty, it, it was quite big when we got there. Yeah. And we were there an hour and a half before it started. Crikey. Yeah, okay. um, but there was already quite a few people in the queue. Yeah. Um, How many years has it been going now, Salute? Just sort of. Just so sort of. this year was the 51st Salute. I don't know if that means it was going for 51 years, but they've hosted 51 events. Oh, crikey. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... It's well established. Yeah, so um, you can tell whether I suppose my I, as my point with that was obviously to see a queue that big. It must have been going for a while. People obviously really want to go to this yeah. event, sort of thing. Yeah, and I think it sort of fills a bit of a void that I don't believe there's a Warhammer Fest this year. Oh, and, okay, yeah. Um, you know, it's not all about Games Workshop, and yeah. it proves that that there is a massive world and. I'm kind of aware of how big the tabletop hobby is, but when yeah. you see just how much is there, yeah, yeah. it opens your eyes to there is a whole world outside yeah. of the Games Workshop, yeah, yeah. and it was incredible. Yeah. Um, so I was lucky enough to get a goodie bag, and through the magic of editing, here is the Salute goodie bag. Aha. Uh -huh. Magic. Nice. So, um, if you have a, a little, let's have a little look at what we got in there. Yeah. So obviously, we got the event program, We'll put a couple of pictures or something over yeah. the screen. Let's we'll have a little look through that because I've seen it. But it's got, um, well, you can have a look. But it gives a, an overview of the event, um, who they are. There's, there's like advertising in there. There's yeah, a yeah. map that explains the layout of the event, which will show that and it shows you how huge it was. Um, rustling of the bag for all you ASMR fans out there. So one of the other things that we got because we were there early, we got the um, complimentary Salute 51 miniature. Again, you're not gonna see that on this camera, but we'll put a, an overlay up. So that's Stormy Annie, the Pirate Queen, sculpted by Bad Squiddo Games. There's even a painting tutorial in the book. How to paint her. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at that, it's cast, it's a metal miniature, so yeah. that takes you back. Takes me back a little bit. Very cool. Um, so I got one of the lucky goodie bags. So I got a limited dice tray from All Rolled Up. Excellent. I think there were 265 of those in the 6,000 mm. goodie bags. Nice, very good. Um, we got different leaflets and things for some of the vendors. But then we also got given a free rule set for a game called Hobgoblin by Mike Hutchinson. Oh, nice. So it tells you how to build your army. I haven't looked at this yet. I 
feel quite bad about that. But I think it's uh, basically you can use whatever miniatures you want. Yep. And then it's got all of the the stats, how the game works. Nice. So it's like a four pager, and you got an entire game for free. Excellent. Which is really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. The the amount of traders is just ridiculous. Just looking at this page, that is absolutely mental. Yeah. When you see that map there, and then you see the map. Let's so pop that there. Just to look at that. So obviously we're queuing up here, came in here, and then it's massive. Just a, a it was people soup trying to get around. Yeah, there, yeah, to yeah. be honest, there was so many people. Yeah. But um, you had some of the bigger um, retailers. So Wayland Games had a stall. Yep. Warlord Games did. Yep. Element Games were there. TT Combat had a massive stall. Yeah. But then there were so many smaller and like independent. Uh, companies yeah. and people who were sculpting their own miniatures Bad Squidder Games were there and yeah. they're not small by any means their store was huge yeah. um, but th there was just so much stuff that I didn't know existed yeah, yeah. and seeing it there and when you see this map on screen it's like there was so much and the amount of particip the amount of games as well yeah, yeah. that were being played so on this map the blue store the blue squares are vendors and green are the gaming tables right so yeah, crikey. there was a lot going on yeah 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 what games had sort of took your eye or vendors that had taken your eye where you're like, actually, I'd love to get into that. So one of the games that really did take my eye was uh, Fallout Factions by Modifus Games. Yeah. Um, big fan of the Fallout game series. Uh, I've not watched the TV show yet. You should but get on it. Good? Yeah, it's good. Nice. Yeah. Not endorsed by Amazon. No. <laughs> it is good. Um, but so it's a skirmish based game uh, developed by James Hewitt who was the guy who created the new version of Necromunda yeah so you kind of know it's going to be good yeah um, but the demos of that that were being played I didn't I didn't pick it up and play it no. I, I watched a few people playing it yeah and it looked really really good I was tempted to pick it up on the day um, but when I asked them do you have any for sale I was told it's currently stuck in the Red Sea ah so I think they said they were aiming to have it out you know, around July time, so I'm going to keep an eye out for that. I'll yeah, definitely pick that. that up. Nice. Um, there was another stall uh, for a game called Burrows and Badgers, <laughs> which <laughs> okay, it, it sounds sounds ridiculous. Yeah, um, it looks like it's a it's a tabletop game, obviously. Yeah, but the characters look like they're all well armed woodland creatures. <laughs> so you have like mice and foxes and badgers and all sorts. But their their stall South Park springs to mind. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but their stall was rammed. It was so hard to get and look at anything. Yeah. But I looked at that and thought, you know, it's the sort of thing that may tempt Mrs. Smith into looking at a game sort of okay, thing. Okay. Because yeah. it was that sort of yeah, yeah. probably wouldn't. But <laughs> um, I looked at it and thought, you know, that's that's different. I like yeah. the look at that. Yeah, a few yeah. people online since have said that it's actually a really good game. Yeah. Um, War Games Foundry were there, which um, was Brian Ansell's company okay. after he left Games Workshop yeah, yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Um, and some of their models looked great. They had one which was a box set of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah. But the Seven Dwarfs were all members of Slipknot. Amazing. So <laughs> it, it looked really good. I didn't pick it up. Um, I was sort of at the end of my budget by the time I yeah. found that. But that did look awesome I suppose the thing is nowadays as well again tangent is there is so many people out there now doing gaming and I guess probably contributing to that is the 3D printing world mm. so resin printers and you know a lot of the models there were metal oh okay yeah, so, so back to the casting casting like metal yeah ah, there were 3D printed things yeah um, and again like you say that's more likely than not the way things are yeah. going forward yeah but yeah the the amount of metal miniatures there, is, this is amazing. Yeah. And there were there was someone at the Wargame Foundry stand that I saw who had like a sheet of paper and yeah. just had codes written on there for right. all the different models that they were after. Yeah, yeah. And they were going and finding them on the racks. So I was like, it reminded me of being a kid when you used to go into like a toy shop or whatever and they yeah. had the old black backed GW yeah, blisters yeah, yeah, on yeah, the racks. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. I kind of missed that. Yeah. But Showing our age, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the, bl the blister packs from Games Workshop now are cool. You've got the nice artwork on the front. Yeah, yeah. But going and just seeing, like, that big chunk of metal in there. Yeah. And reading the label and... Yeah, no no fancy artwork or anything like that. No. Just, just a chunk of metal. Yeah, it? chunk yeah. of metal and some foam. Yeah. 
The foam, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember. I, I remember. I tell you a story. I used to buy the blister packs and keep all the foam because I used to think one day I'll do something with the foam. You know, I'll make something out of it. I never did. It just went up in the bin. But you know, as a kid, you had the best intentions. The we, foam was there for a reason. We insulated the original shed with all that. Foam. <laughs> Is it sort of a cosplay type of thing? Is it like a heroes convention like sort of thing? That's or like a Comic Con convention? Is it people dressed up or is it just, no, it's just literally everybody's going out. Like you say, it's like a trade show. So it's just, it is a trade show, you just going out to buy no, stuff. No, they, they had a fancy dress theme this year, oh, which okay. was um, pirates, hence the three oh, miniatures yeah. were pirate themed. Cool, yeah. And they did have a, like a fancy dress competition towards the end. Yeah. Um, so Tom, uh, we went up with Tom's wife she took part in that mm -hmm. so when they went off for the judging of that I met up with good friend Ricky oh it's famous Instagram painter Ricky Drinks Paint how are you doing Ricky? I'm fine thank you yourself Benjamin? yeah very good how are you enjoying Salute? it's bloody brilliant <laughs> met some Salute with celebrities fantastic painting competition over here very good entries I don't want to end it myself because I don't want to give the other people some chances, you know. It's only for life. So yeah, when they were in the competition, Ricky and I went and looked around the painting competition area. Yep. Um, so they did have they had the painting competitions going on as well. Was it actually people painting at the time, or just bringing miniature in? So no, so the actual painting competition was a bring in a painter. Yeah, got you. you had to fill in like an entry form, and yeah. it went in big glass cabinets. Yeah. Um, so we'll put some footage of that on screen now, just looking around the cabinets. But the quality of entries were yeah. incredible. Um, just really inspiring and it's like they've announced the date for next year Yeah, and I'm thinking I've got a year to try and get something done so <laughs> I would I'm very tempted to edit it, something next year it's a shame they don't do a painting competition where you come in in the morning and paint to the end of the day so because as we've proved from last year's HeroCon you can do it so there were um, <laughs> there were a couple of things like that there was a speed painting challenge which was run by one group of people so you have 25 minutes to paint a miniature start to finish. Right, great. The Army Paint at Speed Paints. Yeah. And there was another table, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was GriffCon, but I could, I'm could. i probably very wrong. Um, and their table was just covered in piles of sprues. And right. whether it was a fine bits, build something and see what you can come up with yeah. type of a yeah. deal, I'm not sure. I, they, they were very busy. Mm. But that that looked pretty cool. So there there is participation events yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing they did have this year was they had a, a film premiere. Okay. Um, so it was like a documentary about the art of miniatures. Oh, okay. So they had sort of like a sort of like a stage to kind of when they're doing talks and stuff like that. Yeah. Or just like a, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, there was yeah. like panels going on. So there was one about game design that had uh, people like Alessio Cavatori on it. They had a terrain making one, which had 52 miniatures. Louis Sugden was, or Rogue Hobbies was on there. Um, they had a Hobby Heroes one later in the day that Peachy was on. Okay. Um, so there was a lot that you could do. And again, you, it opens at 10 o'clock, yeah. closes at four. If you're literally walking around spending money all day, you're in a world of trouble. So it's nice that there are things you can break it up with, yeah. like the panels, or it was an extra ticketed event, but you could go to the film premiere, which would have taken an hour of the day. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. So there's things you can do. Okay, yeah. Another highlight was seeing the Titan Owners Club. Okay. So I've seen photos of it from other events, but I've never seen it so in we're person. Talking, we're talking more around 40k times. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So <coughs> there was, um, it was this area on the map here, uh, GG06, massive area taped off. Okay. And there was just every type of Titan you can imagine. <laughs> And it was like set up as a big battle. I don't know if it was just set up as a display or if they were actually gaming. Right. But um, that was something else. See, just just that, tight as nothing else. Into there it, was no. knights in there. No, no okay. other... Um, like smaller miniatures. No yeah, okay. Yeah. But seeing that and thinking you could probably buy a small country with the amount of money that's tied <laughs> up in those models. Yeah, correct. It was unbelievable. Um, I said to Ricky, actually, because um, he owns a Warhound, Right, okay. And I believe he is a member of the Titan Owners Club, but he didn't sort of exhibit Did it, yeah. and take part in that. But yeah, that was cool to see. Something so, that you wouldn't be tempted in the future? Buying a Titan. Titan buying a Titan, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe it depends future, who's asking me. Maybe, maybe a future video? No. The, <laughs> if, if I was to buy anything from Forge World, well, it's not Forge World anymore, is it? But no, no. If I was to get any of those bigger kits, I would get a Thunderhawk. Yeah. Because I've wanted one since that original metal one and came out. I was going to say, it's that. That cost 40,000 retro. Pennies. Yeah, that retro, uh, that retro Thunderbolt yeah. back in the day was, um, yeah. So, yeah, so if I <clears throat> if I felt 
daft enough with my money, that's what I would buy. But I do like the Warhound Titan. I think it looks cool. Yeah. So, okay, so we know you're obviously, like myself, you've got your 40k hobby. And we've obviously established that it isn't just 40k, it's everything else. Yeah. Was there anything that you actually purchased or you went out there to go, right, I want to go buy this? I'm guessing, I think we discussed it before we actually went. You weren't going to look for 40k because obviously you can buy 40k wherever. Yeah. So you kind of went, I kind of get got the idea that your goal to go here was to kind of find something new and niche. So did you buy anything new and niche? And I, but out of the corner of my eye, no one can see this, but I can see a big pile of stuff. My I guess you didn't just bring that stuff because... You know, my swag. Your swag. <laughs> my pirate booty. No, so, yeah, you're right. Obviously, you can pick up GW stuff anywhere, brick yeah. and mortar online, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I did. My plan was to pick up that Fallout game because I'd seen it right. advertised. Got you. Um, but I couldn't get that. Yeah. But, yeah, my, my mindset was don't buy anything Games Workshop. Yeah. yeah. Find something different. Find some new things. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So, yeah, should we have a little look at yeah, let's have a look. Oh, I want to see what you got. So the first thing that I picked up was some things with Gaslands. Yeah. So we've got the core rules. So I picked up this Gaslands Legacy book by Mike Hutchinson, which is kind of a... It's like a campaign book. There's scenarios in there. Oh, okay, cool. And the way the guy on the stall described it to me was it's almost like each time you progress a mission, yep. you get attributes to pimp your car. Nice. So yep. you're basically... Almost like how in Necromon you start off with a juve and you build them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how your car starts. Yeah, nice. Like so that. I've got that. So once we've learned how to play the game yep. and we've played a few of the basic games, maybe we can go into a campaign with it. And again, tangent, we have to build something to play on. Mm. So could be another video in the future. We both have kids. We've got one of those road car maps. <laughs> uh, and also got um, some skid dice for Gaslands because oh, nice. I just thought they looked cool. Yeah. And I like dice. Yeah, yeah. So that was the uh, first thing, and that was the first purchase I made. Um, I was like, that will do, yep. because we want to play that game anyway, so yep. that's really useful for nice. me. Nice, yeah, yeah. Uh, so another store that was really awesome was a company called Crooked Dice. Okay. Um, and they had a plethora, that's a good word, a good word, of different metal and resin miniatures based <laughs> on TV characters, <laughs> film... Um, they had Gremlins, Ghostbusters, Stranger Things, Excellent. the A-Team, all that kind of stuff. Excellent. But the ones I chose were Cybernetic, which is, we'll put it up here, but the Terminator, the T-800. Yep. I got a Deadite Hunter, which is Ash from Evil Dead. Yep. And then Raging Brute, which is Goro from Mortal Kombat. Yep. And I was like, that is awesome. And if you look at the prices of those... Yeah. So each one of those five pound, seven pound, you compare that to a single miniature blister from GW, that's eighteen pound minimum. Yeah. I know that you could you could argue there's a slight difference there, that's moulded plastic or whatever, but when you look at what you're getting, one model to paint for five quid. Yeah. That's not bad. No, that's not bad at all. And just to name drop them again, Ricky has painted this one. Right. And it looks fantastic. Excellent. But yeah, so I thought, again, it's a company that I've not heard of before, but I just thought they all looked awesome. Yeah. So I'd give them a go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. So yeah, sticking with miniatures, but not so miniature. We have um, Rascal Town number four, the pirate from Rogue Hobbies. Um, this was released on the day at the con. Oh, okay. Um, so Louise had a stall that was packed. There's no other way to put it. It was rammed. Got it signed which is nice. Um, it comes with a uh, a free, like a downloadable STL to print a massive scenic base for it. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, so if people who are on Instagram have seen the meme of the little frog, that's where that goes on the big scenic base. That means nothing to you mm, because... means nothing. He hates social media. I do. Hates everyone. I really. Yeah, it's true. I barely tolerate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're still watching at this point, that's on you. I got given the... Uh, the quick start rules for Fallout Factions. Oh, excellent. So, obviously you haven't got the miniatures or the actual game to play it with, but it tells you how to play. So, if we want to get into that, we could look at investigating that before we actually get a copy of it. Properly endorsed, endorsed by Fallout as well. Yeah, it's a licensed product. Amazing. Yeah. 
So the uh, Modifers also do um, another Fallout game, yep. which is more of a, a map. It's not set in Nuka World. It's no. just generally in the the wasteland. Okay. They do one for Skyrim. Right. Okay. Um, they have sort of D twenty based role play games. So there's a Fallout RPG. Excellent. Which is pretty cool. Excellent. So yeah, they've got a big range of stuff. Rumble Slam. So um, one of the games that. Tom wants us to play on the channel is Rumble Slam by T you're laughing because you've seen the picture right yeah <laughs> so one of the games that Tom wants us to play is Rumble Slam by TT Combat um, it's a a wrestling based tabletop game right so he's got the core set he bought a ring for it so we have like an arena um, so I bought a team called the Masked Mayhem you're not going to see it on that camera but you'll see it on that one and that is a bunch of dudes in their pants. D not wrestling pants, their pants. They're in their white fronts. And masks, looking lovely. <laughs> so this is um, an event exclusive. So right. they only sell this team when they're at conventions and things like that. Yeah, okay. So that's why I bought this one instead of one of the other ones. Plus I thought they looked absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> as this guy who's basically in a baby outfit. <laughs> and he's got the Iron Sheik's boots on. He really does. So that's a selling point. Yeah. So that's something else to paint up, something else we can look at on the channel. But again, the quality of those miniatures when you and Tom looked at them yeah. were really good. And it was 25 quid, but I don't think that was too bad for a complete no. set of what you need for yeah. a game. Yeah. I think what you pay for a squad, um, it's not too bad. No. I fucking hate God. So... For me, painting is my main sort of yeah. source of enjoyment in the hobby. I like playing the games, but I like painting models. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've heard a lot about Colour Forge. So they had a stall there. It was right next to Rogue Hobby, so that was easy to go to both. Yep. Um, when you think about a can of Army Army Painter Primer or the GW stuff, yeah, you're probably paying fourteen, fifteen pound for a can that's this sort of size. Yeah. So these were. Twelve ninety nine each, but at the event it was three for thirty. So okay, ten or each. Yeah, uh, you get twenty five percent more in there than yeah. you do in the other ones. Um, I've been told by people the coverage is great. When you looked in the display stands there, um, the, you could see on the models yeah. how good they were. Yeah, you're not just limited to black, white, silver, green, or whatever. They yeah. have a whole range of colours yeah, yeah. you can choose from. I did just go for the simple: a black one, a white one. And then because I'm doing Soul Blight, I thought I'd go for the, the bone coloured one. Okay. But also that may be really good to try with contrast paint over the top of. Yeah. So bought that one more for experiment. The black and white obviously for day-to-day -day workhorse yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but once I use up my GW and Army paint stuff, I think this will probably be what I go to. Okay. Because you can get yellows, you can get a Space Wolf equivalent, you can get Dark Angels green, Blood Angels red, purples, metallics. And the metallics are the same price. Yeah. Whereas if you go for the Retributor Armor GW spray, yeah, the cost yeah. is a lot more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those were a, a no-brainer for me. That was one of the primary things I went to get as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Primary. <laughs> it's a primer. That's why I hate people. The last thing I bought uh, was more paint, funnily enough. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd pick up some of Duncan Rhodes' Two Thin Coats paints. Okay. Um, if you've seen some of the videos on the channel, I'm definitely a convert to Pro Acryl for Monument Hobbies. Yep. But from what I've heard of these, they are almost a, a, a real good colour match to GW. Yep. But the coverage is better. Okay. Uh, the bottle quality is better, and apparently they go onto the models better. Okay. So if you if you're used to using GW paints, you know what you're getting. Yeah. But amped up. Okay. Um, so I had a very specific. Um, goal in mind for buying these yep. um, because I've got the Pro Acryl, I've got Games Workshop I've got Army Painter Yeah. I have an idea of painting uh, Space Wolf okay. in each of the different yep. paint ranges yep. to see what the equivalent colours are like Okay. so with GW you know what you're getting because yep. that's the brand Yeah. Yep. Army Painter have a colour match yep. so does Duncan Rhodes okay. and then with Pro Acryl I'm going to try and do a, a best match yeah, and yeah. then sort of see how the paints cover, see which ones look the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll have a very mi mix mashed squad. Okay, yeah, that's what cool. it'll be. Yeah. But so I've picked these up specifically for what I would need for that project, yeah. 
and if I like them I may look at more they've just released a whole nother set I'm not going to go full on and buy them all like no. a pro acryl <laughs> but so yeah that was and it was nice to Duncan was on install selling them talking to people um, so yeah that was my salute haul mm. so would you go back again next year yes no, um, definitely. They've announced the dates for next year already. Yeah. Um, so, like I say, I plan on entering the painting competition next year. Okay. Yeah. I don't expect to do well, um, but it's just got to get it. something in the cabinet. You've got to be in it to win yeah, it, yeah, as they say. Yeah, you go. Um, and also, now I've experienced it once, it's I kind of know what to expect a bit yeah, more. So it's yeah. like I can plan my day. Yeah. Don't go shopping straight away. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy looking around or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were some things I saw this year that I should have picked up but didn't just mm-hmm. because... I wouldn't have been able to carry it or whatever. Yeah. But there was a company that I want to mention called Uncertain Scenery that okay. do laser cut MDF terrain. Okay, yeah. Um, and I know you're kind of familiar with that sort yep. of thing. We've got some. Yeah. But compared to some of the other brands, this stuff just looked amazing. Um, they had a couple of whole tables set up. They had one for, I think it's called Drop Zone Commander, which is a specific game. Okay. They had a table set up that was epic scale. Yeah. And then they had a 40K table set up. Yeah and it's just unbelievable and the guy who runs the company actually spent some time talking to me yeah. sort of explaining how the stuff was so modular yeah um but everything that had a door you could open the door on it That's one of right. the things he said they were looking at um he said they they listened to customer feedback so one thing that had been suggested yeah was someone said you've got this big lift can you make a lift that's big enough because you can build the tables multi-level yeah that you could put a rhino or a razor back right in. yeah so that because and I'll put a clip on screen like one of the tables it was like a sewer level and then a street level and yeah. then some raised parts yeah. they were basically saying you could then drop your vehicle down yeah. and patrol underneath and yeah, the whole yeah. table was playable because you can lift the tops off that's really cool and it was thicker wood the quality the detail was really good yeah. he spent some time and said about the best way to paint it to prep it up Yeah. so that was really cool and I think if I go back and I've looked at it online it's like that's that's yeah. really cool so maybe next year pick some of that up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'll definitely go back. And if you can, you should definitely come as well. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Sounds like a good day. So that's it. In a in summary, salute yeah. was good. Salute was really good. I should go next year. Maybe you should go next year. If we're watching this, if you're into the the game hobby like we are and want to go look at some tabletop games and something different that's not Games Workshop. If you're just a Games Workshop player, divulge and get into something else. Yeah. Like you say, that was Salute wrapped up. We've gone a bit of a the backstory of tantrums and tabletops. We've yep. gone on a few tangents. We've looked at what we've got coming up. Yep. Um, also, as we mentioned at the very beginning, uh, Heroes Con 3 is coming up on the Isle of Wight. If you're local to the area, it's well worth the trip. Yep. Um, we'll be there. Come and say hello. <laughs> if you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. Uh, if you've enjoyed it and want to let us know anything, please leave a comment below. We do read them all. We try and react. Yep. We try and reply to them all. Yep. Um, obviously this is something new we're trying I mean if you're enjoying it like Ben just said we keep going we, we keep trying these little sort of podcasts and yeah. you're enjoying satting down listening to satting down <laughs> satting or sitting or chatting if you're enjoying listening to us ramble on then yeah we'll, we'll keep doing it please consider subscribing to the channel it really helps us out we're on that very slow march to 500 and we get to become wireless YouTubers <laughs> and until next time Take it easy, and we'll see you again soon. See you later.